Yeah, so I'll talk about uh, saving the web to IPFS with Web Recorder tools. And I'm also going to try to do a live demo. Uh, so it should be interesting. Um, yeah, so about Web Recorder. So Web Recorder is an open source project. Uh, our, some of our objectives are uh, building quality open source web archiving tools, uh, also uh, making web archives more accessible, centralized technologies, obviously a big one, uh, striving for highest fidelity archiving and replay, uh, which I'll, I'll uh, demonstrate later, uh, and really empowering anyone to create, share, uh, and use web archives uh, however they would like to, um, and also create a portable web archiving format uh, and uh, really our motto is web archiving for all. Um, and uh, yeah, so as it turns out, uh, IPFS can help with many of these goals, uh, at least these three. Um, and yeah, and I, I'm the, uh, I guess I should have introduced myself. I'm, I'm the lead developer and creator of the Web Recorder project. Uh, and uh, yeah, just to cover, uh, there are many different use cases uh, supporting archives and libraries and uh, digital preservation work uh, as a, is a major, major uh, use case. And we work with a lot of libraries, uh, including the National Library of Iceland, who is using some of our open source tools. Uh, brief shout out to them. Uh, also supporting community and personal archiving, uh, including allowing individuals to archive their own content, uh, allowing communities to archive uh, shared content online that's, that's important to them. Uh, data rescue and archiving at risk content. Uh, so anything that might be threatened by government censorship, uh, war, uh, or just link rot uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, also supporting verifiable web archives used as evidence. Uh, it's also uh, becoming a more, more important use case. Um, and last and not least, of course, is the kind of bridging between the current web, or whatever you want to call it, Web 2, and the next generation of the web, whether it's D-Web, Web 3, P2P Web. Um, yeah, and so each of these use cases could, of course, be their own presentation. But uh, yeah, so that, that there's a lot, uh, a lot of different use cases for this uh, technology. Um, and uh, just brief introduction to one of the workflows uh, we have: archive web page is one of the tools uh, which allows you to archive with uh, an, a browser extension, an electron app, or just a regular website. Uh, and then we have a portable format, uh, which we call the WAXE format, which I'll talk about later as well. Uh, and then we have a separate tool, which is Replay Web Page, which allows you to view the web archives. And it runs as uh, just a regular web app, uh, a progressive web app, a desktop uh, electron app, or an embeddable web component. Um, and uh, yeah, and so that's sort of the, one of the workflows. Uh, and of course, IPFS is sort of the key there as one of the storage options for for the portable data format that we have. Um, there's also, this is sort of the manual archiving workflow, which I'll demo. There's also uh, an automated workflow where we replace archive web page with a crawler that uh, can run in Docker, uh, as well as uh, Kubernetes. And there's an API and a, and a GUI being developed. And it can be deployed anywhere from, well, the, the uh, CLI version can be deployed anywhere from a Raspberry Pi, in fact, to uh, a larger cloud deployment. And so I won't have time to demo this, but uh, uh, just kind of mentioning the scale of, of uh, some of the things that, that we want to support. Um, yeah, and so I'll just uh, skip right ahead to the live demo portion. Um, and so, so uh, I'll start in Brave and um, could load. So our web page kind of has this landing page. From here, you can install the extension so I've already done that, um, and it's right here. Uh, and uh, it's uh, and so what, what I can do is let's say I want to go to uh, the web recorder Twitter feed, for example, and I can go into the extension. I can click create new archive. Let's call it demo, um, and then I can click start. Uh, and this is using the Chrome debug API, so it's showing that. I'm debugging this browser. Uh, that's sort of a part of, of Chromium. Uh, and uh, that allows me to archive everything that's being loaded here. And so you could see here that uh, I've already loaded 10.4 uh, megabytes, and it's deduplicated, so it's stored 
I think that's accurate. Um, so let's try maybe something more interesting, like the IPS thing hashtag. And uh, there's some tweets in here. Um, let's say I want to archive this Twitter feed. I could click on each tweet. Uh, we also have and that, that's going to be a little bit tedious. So we have this thing called autopilot, which uh, what that will do is it will automate that for me. So it will start clicking on each tweet and scrolling down um, and also scrolling through the images. Um, and as it's doing that, that's all being archived. So we can see the size counter going up. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's. Uh, and if, if I leave it running, it should just uh, keep going through the entire hashtag. Um, so in the interest of time, I will just pause that here. It's probably good enough. Um, and so it's not, and then I'll, I'll stop the recording. And what I can do is, so I'll click that. I can then go to the browse archive. Uh, and now it's showing me that I've archived this uh, uh, this Twitter, uh, actually, I guess since so some of the complexities, I started at the webrecord.io and then I dynamically changed, so it's not actually a, a separate page. So that's uh, so I probably should just gonna uh, start again on this page, just so that that gets added as a page entry. So the history API makes web archiving a lot harder, uh, and Actually, maybe I'll do something else. Let's, uh, let's also click on another page. Um, so I'll also go here and obviously not anything. Uh, this is just a, our static um, site. And that should also get archived once it loads. So oh, maybe let's see here. Hopefully it'll load. So I guess I already have it uh, doing a lot here. So I don't know. I just loaded first, and then I'll, I can turn the archiving back on. Um, so not, another thing to show while it's loading that is while um, uh, so, and this is now the replay. So now I'm I'm in the uh, now I'm viewing the archive and. This is exactly the, the view that uh, you can see that it's logged in as myself. So this is a view of, of twitter.com slash that is unique to me. So it's, a, it's very much a personal archive. Um, and obviously for anyone uh, viewing the web, uh, especially social media, you would have a, a personalized view. Um, and uh, OK, I guess we're loading from, uh, um, maybe I'll stop that. Uh, and um, yeah, so from, from the extension, what I can do is one of the things that we have is the sharing option. And that's where, uh, so we can share this archive on IPFS. And that's um, the way it does that is it generates a WAXD file uh, and additional uh, replay uh, uh, boilerplate, which I'll demo. Um, I can also download this archive locally, um, and uh, then I'll just have it locally as a file. Um, and now that I click on the sharing link, so I have I make available three different options because that's sort of uh, was necessary to test in different environments. Um, and then I can just um, since I'm in Brave, if I paste the uh, obviously it's in the same since and now it's loading the same archive from uh, from IPFS. And so um, I should be able to click on uh, on here. And this is the archive of the of the IPFS thing tw uh, Twitter feed. Um, and it should have uh, and I should be able to scroll and probably click on some of these uh, some of these tweets. Um, so it's a uh, by, by high fidelity, um, the idea is that we're archiving not just uh, not just the uh, uh, a static version of a site, but the actual uh, sort of the interactive web application, including all of the JavaScript that's involved. Um, 
And so this is, uh, this is one of the approaches. Um, and this it requires uh, installing the, a browser extension and uh, archiving exactly what's loaded in your browser. Um, what if you only wanted to archive, well, if, if you didn't want to, uh, or, or you don't have a Chromium-based browser, um, and you wanted to uh, archive just a single page at a time, uh, later created a kind of a simplified version of this, um, where you can actually archive a single page at a time without having to install an extension. Um, and this approach, uh, oh, and I should say the sharing of IPFS works well in Brave through there, but not in, and not anywhere else currently. Uh, but uh, in Express at Archive web page, you can just enter a URL uh, and it will load that and this should load in any browser. Um, so let's say I want to archive Dietrich's tweet. Uh, actually, we also have a way of archiving just the tweet version itself. Uh, and uh, so this is a, a kind of a, a special, um, so OEmbed is a standard for embedding that allows for essentially loading an embed like this and, and uh, Twitter happens to support it. Um, and so, and then I can uh, also download this as a file or I could share this to IPFS from here. And uh, now we're using uh, Web3 storage, so that works really well. Um, and we have this, uh, this URL, which I can um, load again in, in uh, actually that was in Chrome. So let's switch to, uh, to Brave uh, so that the, the gateway link loads natively. And now we have it loading uh, in Brave. Um, let's also try Agrigor. <laughs> Two browsers aren't enough, let's try three. Uh, and actually, I'm gonna copy the direct PFS link. And, and so that, uh, and now we have it loading in Agrigor as well. Uh, um, so we could probably also, there, there, of course, for, for other browsers, there's still the, the, um, the direct gateway link, which, uh, let's see if that actually loads. Oh, no, I guess I copied the, hold on a second. Yeah, so if I just click on that, uh, that will probably take longer. So, um, some of the other things we can do, uh, here's a, you can also archive YouTube videos in this way. Um, oh, actually, for YouTube, uh, another thing you can do is actually archive. So we're talking about uh, kind of archiving things from existing archives or Web 2 uh, to uh, Web 3 uh, and having a more permanent storage for places. You can actually also re-archive things from Internet Archive. So there's a, a mode where you can enter, you can select between live web and, and the uh, and a timestamp, and so, if, for example, if I enter GeoCities, and then uh, I load that, it should start pulling this from uh, from Internet Archive. That takes a little bit, and so this is the a version of GeoCities.com from uh, from 1996, uh, and it's fairly small, so it's only. And then we can also share that to IPFS as well, and so you could rearchive pages from Internet Archive one page at a time uh, with this. Uh, and uh, it will generate uh, a different uh, SID every time because it's also including timestamps in there. But um, yeah, so kind of same idea. You can load it in, in, uh, in Brave and then we'll have a, a version of this. Um, okay, so, so that's uh, part of the, yeah, I'll, I'll Probably interest of time, I'll move on back to the to the slides, uh, and uh, so yeah, if if you need to archive a page to IPFS in a pinch, uh, you could try Express the Archive web page. Um, it generally should work, for, and as long as it's not something that's that's private, uh, should work for public uh, data. Uh, it's also proxying things through Cloudflare because uh, that's the only way that we can uh, access things in another website due to course restrictions. Um, and yeah, and so what works really well, uh, Brave uh, access and creating web, web archives on the desktop uh, works really well. 
um, as I've just shown, uh, also uh, access on uh, an Agricor browser, thanks to Move, uh, works really well on desktop. And there's also a mobile version of, of Agricor that uh, can load IPFS links uh, directly as well. And uh, of course, using uh, web free storage has generally been uh, really fast. Um, but of course, that's a, just an HTTP API. Um, but it works, uh, uh, yeah, generally very, uh, uh, very robustly and reliably. Um, yeah, and so how much data can we store? Um, so in the, in the case of that uh, GeoCities page, uh, that was, I think, around 100K or so. Um, so that's one uh, kind of lower bound. Uh, and then uh, part of an archiving effort uh, to archive Ukrainian websites uh, from a large crawl, not using the browser extension, but using the crawling system, which produces data in the same format. Uh, we actually have a an archive that's about one terabyte, um, and yeah, and so we can actually browse that. Um, so if I just load that here, uh, I had it preloaded. It's a it's a also in the same format. Um, I believe it's a it's a page in four languages uh, that has a whole bunch of YouTube videos. Uh, there's a whole media section that that is uh, uh, just multiple hour long YouTube videos, and the size is one is uh, just over a terabyte. Um, yeah, and so the idea is that the system should support uh, anything in that range, and ideally, ideally larger as well. Um, so Chrome is trying to load for the gateway; that's going to be slow. So we'll just uh, move on, um, and. Uh, yeah, so a little bit about the Waxy format. So it's a kind of a standalone format. It packages some of the uh, existing formats that we use in the web archiving world, including Work, um, which lacks indexes. So that's sort of a main limitation of Work. Um, so we add the kind of standard index format called CDX uh, into uh, to the Waxy format. Um, it extends the frictionless data package. Um, wanted to start with something that's just not, not create entirely a new format from scratch, but base it off of something and, and frictionless data seem like a good alternative. It can include uh, diagraphic signatures of all the data here. Um, so it actually, uh, uh, yeah, everything is, is uh, hashed and then signed at the end uh, in the manifest or in the in digest file. Uh, and it's basically just a zip file, so which allows for random access. So, uh, and this is the structure of the zip file. Uh, and there's a link to the specs. Um, yeah, and so the idea is that this this file format can be loaded from anywhere, from IPFS, from local file system, HTTP, uh, and yeah, it's basically the simplest thing that works. So putting it on IPFS, uh, didn't want to uh, do anything special with IPLD to start, just a, basically uh, a UnixFS directory structure with uh, the Waxy file itself, and then this boilerplate um, these four, uh, three files, uh, index and HTML, which loads the uh, uh, web component, um, and then a service worker and the UI um, that provides the, the, the nav bar and the, um, all of the UI for, for browsing. And, that, and, that, and this is what, um, when I express a web page and a web page we're putting data on IPFS, this is what it's putting essentially is uh, this, uh, a SID with this structure. Um, and uh, so, yeah, how have we tried putting data on IPFS? Um, so via the browser extension with JS IPFS in the browser, so if you're using Chrome, that's what it will use. Um, if it's using Brave, then it will use the native uh, Go IPFS in Brave. Um, and I think we'll probably do something similar with Aggregor. Then there's also an Electroc version of Archive Web Page, which runs JS IPFS in Node. And then, um, and then finally, with uh, Express Archive Web Page, just uploading to web free storage through regular HTTP API. Um, and uh, if I were to rank these approaches, um, this is kind of how, how it's been. <laughs> uh, the, JS IPFS in the browser by extension is 
not really reliable <laughs> for I can just generate a URL and give to users and expect that to work, which sort of makes sense the way that um, uh, the native support in Brave uh, works much better. Um, uh, but there's still some hacks involved. Uh, the Electron app with JSFAFS mostly works, but there's some, yeah, it's also not, not a, quite as reliable as it is in Brave. And then, of course, uploading to Web3 storage has been super reliable and easy to use, so, so that gets five stars. Um, yeah, and some of the, yeah, some, just more details about um, the JSIPFS in the browser. Also attempted custom preloading uh, because you don't necessarily want to upload everything at once. Uh, it's running in a service worker, so there are some limitations. Can't use WebRTC. Um, uh, but yeah, so there's, there, there, there have been a few challenges there. The embedded mode in Brave, since there's no writable gateway yet, I basically have to port scan uh, for a API port that Brave runs on. It runs on one of five ports, depending on if you're using Brave release version or, or dev build. And also have to overwrite cores because the gateway is not designed to be used in the browser. So basically, it, it's sort of a huge hack. Uh, the Electron API uh, had to implement a custom PC system because the recording happens in the browser and then send it to the Electron node process. Um, and also, kind of, also very, very custom implementation there. And then for WebD storage, just creating the car files and using the REST API. Um, so yes, yeah, so sort of all kind of very different ways of trying to do the same thing. Um, and uh, yeah, so then the challenges for reading from PFS. Um, so number one, I think, is a need for reliable gateways, uh, especially for small random access reads. Um, and uh, as what often happens is since it's pulling small amounts of data, the gateways often time out with a 429 error, or at least dweb.link does, and I think it also does, but uh, yeah, so it, it sort of depends on the uh, on what the gateway implementation. Um, yeah, uh, sort of one of the reasons for web archiving is to be able to solve link rot and have a permanent URL to give to users, um, and so HTTP links are not reliable. Um, so IPFS links, content address, that's great, uh, you can press the link, but we need to choose a gateway to access IPFS, and so we're kind of back at Linkrot because we need to give users an HTTP link which, to a gateway which may not always work. Uh, and so that is sort of a problem for reliability um, currently. And um, yeah, the, the way that I think sort of, sort of the, the, the three main key operations for a web archive I think that uh, we need to focus on are sort of from a user's perspective, a user should be able to browse an existing web archive. And so to do that, we need to load blocks from set, sit in a, in a random access. We need to be able to make a copy of, the, of an existing web archive. Um, and that's where we need to pin the whole thing locally or maybe somewhere else that, they, that the user can, can, can know that, that that's their copy. Um, and then of course, creating and sharing serialized to Axie uh, and then pin that data in that structure that I showed earlier. Um, and uh, make a distinction between one and two because just to browse a web archive, you just want to have uh, the random access. You might want to just look at a few pages, uh, and then if you actually want to make a copy, then that's when you pull the whole thing. So the the, the random access read uh, from a very large data set is is very important here. Um, yeah, and, and IPFS should really be as infrastructure uh, users of archives shouldn't have to know or think about using IPFS. Uh, I think. Uh, and I think ideally it would just present these, the, 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 the options on the left, in, in the left column is what we want to present to users uh, and not tell them about what's happening on the right unless they're developers. Um, and uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, so, so I think that the, uh, these are, are some of the key goals to, uh, to be working towards. Um, it, just briefly about future work. Um, uh, how to build large archive collections, uh, trying to standardize this data layout. So this is kind of what we have for one waxy files, but you can, obviously you can't put everything into one file. You want to be able to mutate and add additional files later. Uh, maybe that's what the structure looks like, uh, still kind of being decided. There might be another manifest involved there probably. Um, another uh, idea that was discussed is uh, not use a zip, actually unzip the waxy format and just put that uh, 
directory layout that I had earlier directly uh, when, when putting it on IPFS. Um, the zip is basically just used as a, as a container. It's not, the data is actually stored in the zip as uncompressed data uh, to make it portable so that users can download a single file. But if they're putting it on, if, if putting that data on IPFS and users aren't downloading a file, maybe we just unzip it first. Um, and maybe we create a car of this directory structure uh, and maybe that will be a standard um, and uh, more work ahead. So standardization, um, uh, authenticatable web archives. So that's that's a really big one. So since anyone can create an archive and put it on PFS as a, a demoed or downloaded, how do you trust this web archive? Um, uh, either as the WAXI file or as a CID or, or in, in, in any format. Um, and have several approaches for in the cloud, but still trying to figure out how to do that with archives created in the browser. Um, interop between the cloud and browser-based archiving tools, so um, making it easier to kind of, if you need to crawl a whole site, uh, you run the, the cloud system, then maybe you patch in things that are highly interactive and require browser-based archiving. Um, possible integration with PFS Companion in some capacity, maybe, uh, as, as Dave mentioned, uh, something to be discussed. Um, uh, private and encrypted web archives, something that we don't have right now, but if you're archiving private, uh, exactly what's loading your browser, including logged in and paywalled content, you definitely want to have an option to make that private and encrypted. Um, search uh, either by URL, uh, by date, or possibly full text search, uh, probably all of the above. Uh, and then finally, even further out, and uh, maybe even putting not just web archives, but whole Web2 servers into emulators and running them on, on, on WebAssembly. And for that, you could see Old Web Today, which is a, another project I worked on that runs old browsers in, in emulators. Um, so that's way further out, but since there's a lot of talk about web WebAssembly, I thought I'd just put that in there as well. Um, yeah, and uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, uh, find out more about Web Recorder site. And yes, we're hiring if anyone wants to help. So uh, thank you. Thanks, Ilya. You have tried IPFS to both read and write in more ways in one single. If you are interested in a job doing DevRel too, you could have a lot of more demos. Anybody have any questions for Ilya? Um, regarding your cloud thing, um, do you have any sort of like deny lists or any sort of moderation features? Because it seems like this could be a way for people to just like circumvent blocks and other things or start using your infrastructure to crawl things which uh, they maybe shouldn't. Uh, so like, is there any moderation in place or plans in the future? Or is there even like a worry of DMC takedowns? Um, possibly. So it's still in very early stages of development. Uh, so the, these tools are, are a little bit further along. Um, right now, kind of focusing on supporting archives and, and, and institutions that are kind of would run crawls in a controlled way. Uh, yeah, if, if it's ever offered as a public service, um, then we definitely need to think about that. Um, of course, it's all open source, so someone else could could run it on their own, and then they would have to worry about that. But right now, we're not quite ready to yeah to offer it as a public service. But yeah, those are good questions to, to answer before doing that. So when you had the file system layout that was like two slides, three slides ago that had like Web Archive 1, Web, Web Archive N, I didn't grab like, so what's that for? Why do you want to have multiple? Is it like snapshots over time? Uh, possibly, yes. Uh, so it could be snapshots over time. It could be that you've crawled one site uh, or a bunch of sites, then you realize that you need to add more things. So it could be either snapshots of the same site or additional sites or, uh, yeah, any, any, any combination of that. Um, and then replay service worker is something? What's that do? Um, so the, the the replay, yeah, so the, the replay here is, uh, and again, the, the, this is all something that, that will probably change. Um, yeah, so the, right now the, the replay is bundled with, uh, with the archives themselves. There's an argument for possibly also separating that because you could actually point this, um, since it's just a service worker that's loaded, you could um, load the replay and then uh, pass a parameter that loads loads the actual archive from a different SID. Um, so yeah, so that, that 
there, there's a few things to figure out there. But like, there'd be like an app that helps you browse. Yes, yes, yes exactly. Yeah, yeah, this is just the boilerplate, right? So, so this is the, this is the the actual UI that, um, so like, that's basically what's, what renders this, uh, and, and, and yeah, essentially, and the, the HTML is just, uh, yeah, yeah, just basically just that. Uh, Thanks. That was really cool. Um, kind of two questions. First one's uh, the crawler that you're using behind the scenes to do all of this. Uh, is that open source somewhere? And can we integrate it into other stuff to do more of this? Um, yeah. So, so there, there's a difference. So what, what I showed now uh, with the browser extension, that's basically just um, that. That's all manual. So uh, nothing is being automated there. It was, it was crawling. So it wasn't crawling. It was archiving what I was loading in the browser. There's a separate tool that, that, that does crawling. Uh, which is also open source. Yes, I, 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 yeah, I, I didn't quite have time to demo it, but I, I, I can I can talk more about it. But it produces it also produces it basically automates the browser uh, running in and automates it with uh, Puppeteer and produces output in the same format. Very cool. Okay, so follow up question: um, If you do this on like a global scale, can you deduplicate like JavaScript libraries and CSS across like the global archive that you're creating? Uh, currently, no, because the the format includes uh, timestamps, uh, and so the way it's stored is is. Uh, but if there is, I mean, I, ideally, this would be, uh, yeah. So currently, the, the the format itself would because it includes timestamps and other metadata, it would not. It would be a, be a different waxy file every time. Um, the interesting part of it would be if if uh, especially for large files, if perhaps there is some sort of. Uh, Custom chunking that could do this automatically. That that's sort of my ideal, so that I, I won't have to worry about that as much, especially for for larger uh, amounts of data such as video. All right. Thanks a lot, Ilya.